All right. Hey, Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, all honor, and all glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Racha Kodash. I also want to give double honors to our apostles and our elders of Great Millstone, which do teach and rule well through the Holy Spirit. Peace, blessing, and many salutations unto your elect across the four winds of this earth. Fulfilling your lots in all truth and all sincerity. I am the priest Sha'ar from the Great Millstone Dallas branch coming to you all with another lesson which is inspired by the Holy Spirit. And Lord willing, this lesson here will be edifying unto the flock. Do not forget your first love. Do not forget your first love. As we sit back and just look at some of the events that we've bore witness to, some of these things that have transpired and more so narrowing in because there's a lot of stuff going on I mean so I should really emphasize on what I mean but out of all the things that are happening you got the you got the stuff brewing up over there in the Middle East out there in the land of Israel with the conflict between uh, Palestine and the Israelis you got still war going on in Russia and Ukraine you got the this great solar eclipse that just crossed over America this past Saturday and in the midst of all these things you have Israelites losing their mind and bugging the hell out. Okay, you got Israelites bugging the hell out. And it's one thing to acknowledge it and say these Israelites are bugging out. But when you look at the bigger picture of these things, the Lord is sifting the house of Israel. Okay, yeah, certain things, you know, we, we, we laugh at, you know, when we don't laugh at it in a comical sense, neither what I mean. But, you know, case in point, using the award situation and them calling on those Gnostic demons, grand macaroni, macaroni and cheese and, and all that stuff, you know, and it's, you know, I, all, all seriousness aside, because it is a serious matter, but you know, we've kind of joked, joked at it, made mockery of those weirdo names that he's calling on. So that's what I mean when I say that, you know, but we obviously know the grand scheme of things and the totality of it and the severity of it, because it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power. But I'm bringing all that up to say, the Lord is sifting the house of Israel. And then you sit back and look at uh, Jephthah from one body in Yahawashai, which those guys were never right anyway. All right, but the, the scriptures talked about those that draw from the faith. And the scripture, another scripture that comes to mind is Matthew 13, where Yahawashai said to them that hath not, to them that hath shall be given and they shall have more abundance. But to them that hath not shall be taken away even that bit that they do have. So we definitely see flavor and salt, the Holy Spirit being stripped away from individuals. And the Lord is definitely sifting the house of Israel. A lot of people are experiencing things. Demons are plaguing on a whole nother level. I mean, we, for those of you all that are in the loop, we know what time of the year it is. It's always this time of the year where those spirits ramp up. Things intensify a lot more. Remember, it's a lot of sacrifices that are being offered up. It's a lot of people throwing enchantments our way especially of those elites because they know who we are and they know that once we turn back into our power the only thing that they can do is pray into their deities and and do the most to get us to stumble or to get us to try to stumble what comes to mind is uh that that account with um, balaam the moabite balaam and how he tried to cast a stumbling block to the israelites and cause them to sin and worship Baal Peor, but that ended up working on his demise and the Lord sent him a vision and in that vision it was pretty much us treading over uh, treading over his neck and the rest of the nations you know so we see things are definitely happening there's definitely sacrifices that are being offered up right now there's definitely enchantments that are being casted on the brothers with the scriptures does say that no enchantments shall stand against Jacob and more so we can look at that scripture talking about the elect because not even not even most Israelites are really Israelites if you look at it through the spirit all right they're following ways of the heathen you even got those two guys in Mississippi that are calling on on pretty much pretty much heathenistic gods and the list goes on and on and on but ain't no enchantment gonna stand against the elect of the most high the Israel of God okay but at the same time these spirits are active and what these spirits are trying to do is they're trying to take away your position. 
and shake you to the point where that crown falls off your head. And our job is not to let it because we have these examples that are in front of us, especially the two individuals were really the two groups that I just named. Again, those guys out there in Mississippi, all right, the former head of Mississippi, whose name is a war, which really he's not, there's no light in that man. All right, and then that that um, that guy that's with him. And then not even just them two, but you know, you got the other buck outs that are with them as well. And then you got, like I mentioned earlier, Jephthah from one body, you know? Excuse me, I'm still getting over this cold, so I got the sniffles and everything like that. But nevertheless, I'm going to read a scripture. And this is an in transit, by the way. I'm going to read this here in the book of Amos, the ninth chapter. And I'm going to read the ninth verse. And it says, for lo, I will command and I will sift the house of Israel among all the nations. Like as corn is sifted in a sieve, yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth. You know, and I'm going to actually read that in the NLT as well. It says, for I will give command and will shake Israel along with the other nations. So things are shaking right now. And we clearly see it. Conflict and uproar going on in the world. And, and Jake and Israel, Israelites bugging the hell out. So the Lord is definitely shaking a lot of things up. And those of us that are in the loop can clearly see it. We clearly see this as a fight. We clearly see these spirits are very heavily active. But it's our job to continue to pray to the Lord and not to give in to these spirits. Okay, because we see examples of guys that took, took heed to those seducing spirits and started following doctrines of devils. And the reason why that's took place, because you have individuals that have departed from the faith, just as the scriptures say. And it's a horrible time to depart from the faith when the whole world is being sifted right now. So in this mass sifting process, the nations are definitely being shaken up, but they don't got nowhere to turn to. They don't got no hope in the Lord. All they can do is just continue to be sifted up and go along with the program that's being put out here. And it applies to wicked Israelites. They're going to be shaking right along with it. And if our faith ain't intact, all right, it ain't going to work out too well for us. That's why we got to make sure we pray that we keep our faith intact continue to suffer patiently and continue to accept I'm going to say that too, to continue to accept the things that we're patient towards. The scriptures say here is a patience and the faith of the saints and that's caused with tribulation so we got to accept the bullshit, accept the tribulation accept the stuff because it ain't going to stop All we uh, it's going to stop eventually of course when the world changes but in this world as Esau's in control, it ain't going to stop the hell is going to go up in moments and it's going to ease back up and it's going to intensify even more. And it's going to happen. It's going to get in more intense until we get out of here. As the scripture say in the book of Acts, the 14th chapter, through much tribulation, we shall enter into the kingdom of the most high. You know, so as we suffer, man, we best start suffering now. That way we don't suffer with the world. Again, when we have examples that are here, the elder Manat the Zakba. You know, you know, shout out, shout out to that brother, man, and all the rest of the beloved brothers that are that have been very fervent and on fire, man. Starting with the apostles and elders on down, man. Shout out to all you brothers that have been on fire with this word through the Holy Spirit, because that's that's the only that's the inspiration. It ain't ever of our own will, but the reason why I bring that up because he ended up doing a show, and I didn't watch it all yet, but the title stood out to me, and the, and looking at that title moved me to just put this on wax as i'm riding home but on the front on the um the thumbnail it's vocab malone and um jephthah from one body which i couldn't even watch that whole interview i only watched a little piece of it which the guy's bugged out anyway he threw but again it's just another example of jake getting worse but when you look at the title of that brother's video it's jephthah is drawing back on the lord what can we learn and again i didn't even click it yet I didn't even click it yet. But immediately when I looked at that title and when I think back at guys like Jephthah and guys like those those um, bug outs in Mississippi and um, in Louisiana, you know, whatever the guy's name is, man, you know, 
But what can we learn from all this? You know? And one thing that I learned from it out of many things is to fear the Lord, which is something that, you know, the, the elect will be doing. Lord will Lord of that number. But I will say this, the more you experience and the more that you see, case in point, using these guys and examples, you know, a war in them, they used to, he, he used to be on fire for the Lord back years ago, man. He used to be on fire. So to see somebody fall out and fall into that state, you know, that's what we can learn to fear the Lord even more. Because now we see more examples of it. Guys that were on fire, guys that you would have thought never would have fell out. And not only just fall out, but turn into complete demons. You know? But hey, we just gain an experience from it. And more so, again, it says, what can we learn? To fear the Lord is one. To be more humble is two. And to allow the Lord to work, man. And don't try to go according to your own program. That's what a lot of guys do, man. As I quoted it earlier, taking heed to seducing spirits, you know, giving heed to doctrines of devils, having itching ears. And the scriptures say it. And these are more examples, man. And again, as I said earlier, and especially as the Lord is sifting this whole, excuse my friends, but sifting this whole motherfucker. This bitch is being torn upside down, torn at the roots. Babylon, the world is the wicked. Everything's being shaken up. So in the midst of that, we got to still compose ourselves and make sure that we are rooted in the faith. That way we ain't being shaken up with the world. The scripture that comes to mind is Malachi, the third chapter. Where the scriptures say how Yahweh Shai is going to come and and and, and um, pretty much loosely paraphrasing, um, wash us like a fuller soap, pretty much being baptized with that fire. But when you read that verse in Malachi, the third chapter, it posed the question, who shall stand when he appeareth? Who shall stand when he cometh? You know, when Yahweh Shai is coming back soon, we clearly see it. We see the prophecies coming to pass and we see things being shaken up. Just as you read it in 2 Ezra chapter 6, starting at verse uh, 12. Matter of fact, I'll read that here in a sec. You read all the way down to verse 14. But it goes into as the Lord is speaking, as the word is speaking, the earth or things are going to shake up. And that's clearly what's happening right now. A mass sifting period that's taking place. A mass sifting. And it's our, through the Holy Spirit, of course. But we got to make sure we're doing our due diligence. That way we're not uprooted and sifted right along with this place. And that leads me to go back to Amos. Because I never finished that up in the NLT. But Amos 9 and 9 says, For I will give command and will shake Israel along with the nations as grain is shaken as in a sieve. Yet not one true kernel will be lost. So everything that's lost is all the dross, all the unnecessary. In order for that true kernel to be um, acknowledged, when I say acknowledged, think of sifting. Think you got a sifter and you got all this gravel, all this dirt, all this grain, all these undesirables that's there and a few kernels. You don't really appreciate the kernels like that when they're covered up in everything else. And you don't really see how many kernels are there. And in order for those true kernels to be taken and counted one by one, everything else has to be sifted out. If everything else ain't sifted out within that, within that sifter, you could lose kernels. You could miss out on kernels. A few good kernels can be left in there. So in the midst of this sifting, everything's being shaken up, including the corn. But the corn isn't going to make it through those holes and be and be um, casted away but it's going to be kept and cherished which is the point of sifting something you sift to pretty much get to find the gold you sift dirt to find gold you know and this process that he's explaining you sift this in order to get the husk and i'm sorry in order to get the wheat from the husk and this is coming from a um an agricultural <laughs> standpoint or perspective you know but that's what he's likening to this verse too that's why it says one true kernel will not be lost because when you sift it, you can spot the kernels. They ain't going to be lost. Everything that's lost is everything that was meant to be sifted and follow through and fall through those holes. So you liken that to the world and even undesirable Israelites that the Lord don't want. You know, so in the midst of the shaking, everything's being shaken up. But the elect ain't going to be sifted all the way through. They ain't going to be cast to the side as the rest of those as that dross. As you will. And I said I would read 2nd Ezra chapter 6. Uh, 
All right, so lock in. Man, this is in transit, so, you know. Got my eyes on the road. Just waiting for a good point to type this in. But this is 2nd Ezra chapter 6, verse 12. And it says, I beseech thee, show thy servant the end of thy tokens, whereof thou showest me part the last night. So he answered and said unto me, stand upon thy feet and hear a mighty sounding voice. Okay, and the voice is speaking. That voice is likened unto the word of the Lord. And right here, Ezra's being told to hearken unto this voice. And he's going to explain the effect after the voice is spoken. So verse 14 says, And it shall be as it were a great motion, but the place where thou standest shall not be moved. Okay, so as the Lord speaks, there's this great motion. And the motion could go into a shakening or a sifting. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. A shakening or a sifting that takes place, you know, but it says right here, he ain't going to move, you know, and this right here is actual vision that, excuse me, <coughs> pardon me, actual vision that Ezra received. And in that vision, he heard the voice and everything was in motion except himself. And when you look at it from an actual perspective, when you look at it, just what's taking place. <coughs> All right. Things are being shaken as the word of the Lord speaks, as his prophecies come to pass, as we, through the Holy Spirit, start explaining these things more and more, going into the scriptures, talking about the prophecies. <coughs> Hopefully that's the last sneeze. Shit. All right. We're talking about these prophecies. Things going to shake up more. Things going to happen more. Spirit's going to get put on people more. These spirits are going to get a lot more active. And we got to make sure that we maintain our faith. All right. We got to, whoo, shit. <laughs> it's lucky I'm through. <laughs> yeah, we got to make sure we maintain our faith. That was another sneeze coming out. You know how it go. That's the spirit. I'm going to end this lesson off here. We got to make sure through the Holy Spirit, we maintain our faith, maintain our integrity, and look at a lot of these guys that are falling out and bucking out as examples. You know what I'm saying? And learn from it. Okay? So call hello, y'all. By Shem, y'all shy. Double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessing to you, elect, fulfilling a lots of truth and sincerity. Shalom.